I'm very happy to, to welcome Markus Reimann, who is the director and co-founder of the TBA 21 Academy. And we are very, very happy that you are here with us today to uh, participate in our eat stream for the theme of long durée. Thank you very much for having yeah. me to this uh, fabulous project and program. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be amongst uh, all these fantastic speakers, thinkers, curators, artists, and so on. Yeah, with, with pleasure. Um, as, as not everybody knows about TBA 21 Academy, can you briefly uh, tell us what the mission is? So TBA 21 Academy is a, is a contemporary art organization and what we like to uh, call a cultural ecosystem that aims uh, to foster a deeper relationship tool and um, better understanding of the ocean uh, through the lens of art uh, in order to inspire care and action. And the vision for, for this endeavor is really a world where everybody cares for the ocean, not about the ocean, but cares for the ocean. Very nice. And what are your long-term goals in terms of um, agenda, what do you really want to achieve in the end? Well, I think in the, uh, in the end, like I said, uh, it is the, the ocean, and this is also a reason why we're looking at the ocean, right? The ocean um, covers 72% of our planet. It's the largest habitat on our planet, and it's the biggest maker of weather and uh, most responsible for climate. Every other breath that we take comes from the ocean, yet the ocean is somehow completely um, you know, divorced from the climate conversation, from, uh, from uh, Fridays for Future and so on, uh, although it plays an, a major role, right? And for many people, the ocean is tremendously removed from their lives. It's maybe something that they go to once a year when it's on vacation, or they never have the possibility to see it, right? Yet it plays a tremendous role in their lives and a tremendous role in the future of this planet, uh, the ocean is our best ally in the in the struggle against the effects of the climate crisis, and so this, that's exactly it. So the question is, how do we build a relationship? How do we um, reconnect people to the ocean so that they can actually, at the end, take the the steps needed to take care of it, to care for it, um, and uh, and through that, help us kind of mitigate and slow down these dramatically accelerating effects of the climate crisis. That also beautifully links to the theme of long durée, um, Baudel's theory, where he basically uh, says that with the climate change, the, the underlying circle of, uh, of sustainability of uh, the environment is in danger. And with exactly what you are doing with inspiring care and awareness and action, you are really trying to fight against that. So that is a very nice link between uh, what you are doing and Bordel's theory. Um, you've pre prepared a little film for us and we are looking, uh, having a look now and to see what you've been doing in the last years and what you have achieved. The starting point of all of our work is the transformative experience of spending times of intensity together by, on, and immersed in the ocean. From there we instigate intersectional and collaborative research, artistic production, and new forms of knowledge. And especially when applying the lens of the long durée, the intersectionality of our work needs to be highlighted as we believe that the ocean the climate catastrophe, social justice, and many other forms of slow-moving violence are inextricably linked and need to be addressed on multiple levels. These initial experiences are then further developed through a number of formats like fellowships, residencies, long-term research commissions and exhibitions, but today I'd like to specifically talk about our fellowship program, The Current, which has, since its launch in 2015 during COP21 in Paris, become as fundamental for the Academy's work, including the programs at Ocean Space in Venice and online on Ocean Archive, as oceanic currents are fundamental for the climate. To explain the format briefly, 
Each the current cycle lasts three years and is led by one or more guest curators. During the first two cycles, the 37-meter explorer vessel Dardanella functioned as a home on the ocean to which each curator was asked to invite five guests from different disciplines to participate in an annual journey, which was framed by certain guiding curatorial questions and concerns, but was inherently open, as there was not automatically an exhibition resulting from it. But each voyage was followed within six months after returning to land by what we call the convening, which is a multi-day, multi-formatted, performative conference sharing the questions, ideas and findings from the voyages with an audience through performances, keynotes, screenings, lectures, conversations and workshops. Quickly, the current became the beating heart of the academy, animating an organization that was determined to operate beyond the exhibition space, but reach into the spheres of science, conservation, policy, activism, and education. Started in, from Port Moresby, which is the capital. So, and from there, we went on to Samurai, another island. And the idea is to go even further north, like to do a circle. The whole expedition is part of the Kula Ring. It's the Kula Ring has two directions. And um, one is clockwise, one is counterclockwise. And it was about exchange of goods, but the experience of exchange. And it came along with like in one direction you use um, armrests and in the other one you use um, a necklace as a form of a ritualistic exchange. You can have like investigative journalism. They'll go in and they'll tell you this is what's happening, these people are exploited, and so on and on. But I don't think they can tell you what the other thing is. Because I think only artists are in their unique position to give another opinion on what this thing is. It's this whole chain of impact that's so important, so difficult to recognize. Everything we do has something that happens as a consequence, everything. I mean, Armin, for example, he works on a film since several years about the Anthropocene, which deals really like human um, dominated environments. And how do we deal with this? And how can we find an equilibrium on this planet where we are maybe the biggest problem through our consumption and through our industrialization and our desires? And the question is, how can we cut back? These two worlds are so different, no? And we coming here, we affect also this world, and it's also responsibility. We chose Venice to become the home of the Academy for all the obvious reasons, but mostly for it being a frontline for rising sea levels and a whole host of anthropogenic interventions in Europe. Whilst we were preparing the Church of San Lorenzo to become ocean space, we showed our first ever long-term research commission of Armin Linke's Prospecting Ocean at the former laboratories of the local marine research center, CNR ISMA. Armin's initial interest in the topic of the work was triggered whilst conducting interviews with members of the International Seabed Authority during our first ever convening in Kingston, Jamaica. The second cycle of the current, led on the one hand by Chus Martinez and on the other by Superflex, resulted, amongst many other things, um, in a joint PhD program between the Max Planck Institute in Constance and the Academy, which is hosted at the Alligator Head Foundation, as well as a new publication by writer Ingo Niemann called Mara Morris. Claudia Comte, who was a participant of Martinez's first voyage to New Zealand, was commissioned directly by Francesca thyssen mista for an exhibition at the National Museum thyssen mista in Madrid, and an entire new body of work based on corals and sponges was then developed whilst on residency at the Alligator Head Foundation and working alongside the marine biologists and woodworkers from the local community. I started to learn more and more about coral and marine life in general. 
having any way in my work environmental concern, I thought this would be really a great new step to really go into a more oceanic um, preservation thinking as well. In 2019, we inaugurated Ocean Space with the exhibition of Joan Jonah's mesmerizing Moving of the Land 2, which was initiated during our second convening in Kochi, India, and then further developed during a residency program at the Alligator Head Foundation in Portland, Jamaica. My name is Joan Jonas, I'm an artist, and we are in the courtyard of the church San Lorenzo in Venice and where I'm installing my piece, Moving Off the Land 2, the installation version um, of a piece about the oceans. What led me to work on the oceans, I thought it was an important issue, and then it became a fascinating uh, subject matter for me. One of the artists present across these formats is Taloy Havini from the autonomous region of Bougainville in the southwest Pacific Ocean. Taloy would have been part of the final journey of Martinez cycle as leader of the current, which was meant to take us to Palau. Instead, we were able to facilitate Taloy's participation in the Artists at Sea program of the Schmidt Ocean Institute aboard the research vessel Falkor on a high resolution mapping exercise of the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, my name is Taloy Havini. I've been commissioned by TBA21 Academy uh, to create a work for ocean space in Venice. This is the really exciting part of being an artist, is at the beginning. I'm interested in this idea of mapping. I find this fascinating, the idea of sound here using multi-beam technology. I'm indigenous to the Pacific, which is a coral sea. Our idea of space and time isn't about looking at a surface and drawing it and then having an artifact with lots of data sets and layers. And <laughs> our idea of mapping is uh, through storytelling and through observation of, of our world environment around us. Starting this year, the third cycle of the current will expand. Span five years instead of three and examine the Mediterranean, the Pacific and the Caribbean from situated oceanic research nodes. Departing from the Mediterranean and led by writer and independent curator Barbara Casavecchia with a working title, The Mediterraneans, Thus Waves Come in Pairs, after Etel Adnan, who is also part of this fabulous program today. This strand will be a transdisciplinary and transregional exercise in sensing, thinking and learning with, by collaborating with and supporting situated projects, collective pedagogies and voices along the Mediterranean shores across art, culture, science, conservation and activism. According to Baudel, historians know that modern history, both early and late, was made by Europeans who built a world around Europe. And therefore, we intend to base our Mediterranean explorations on the stories, reverberations and feedbacks coming together from the shores of Africa and Asia. Now you're starting actually a new chapter with TBA 21 Academy after uh, more than 10 years of being more or less on the road with the ship and uh, with your team and your scientists and and so on. And now you, you are kind of uh, changing the, the concept and you are focusing on different oceans. Can you um, kind of elaborate on, on the scope of the new project? Um, yeah, it's become it's become apparent that we needed to rethink the format, right? Uh, for for a number of reasons, um, to spend these short moments of intensity uh, out in the Pacific over the past six years, seven years actually, um, you know, had tremendous had tremendous benefits and have been uh, tremendously productive as a as a method. Uh, 
um, but it comes with a whole host of questions. One of them being, um, you know, serious questions about the ethics of visiting. What kind of impacts do you have, and can you have, when you when you import and export practitioners' ideas and so on? Um, and I think we've made, despite all of the implications that come with it, the most of that by building uh, lasting relationships. Uh, including the, the the practitioners from there in the conversation and so on. Uh, and the other question, or one of the other questions, was uh, literally the carbon footprint of the program, uh, which was um, something that became more and more troubling, right? And so we decided to uh, to change the format after long uh, thinking, and um, and we decided to dissolve the program into three what we called oceanic, call oceanic nodes. Uh, one being in the Mediterranean, situated or um, kind of initiated from ocean space in Venice, one in the Pacific and one in the Caribbean. We've expanded the, the cycles from, from three years to five, year, five years so that we don't have these different strains running simultaneously, but um, cascading, so meaning we start this year with the Mediterranean, do this year, next year, and the year after Mediterranean, starting next year with the Pacific and the year after with the Caribbean. And then we start putting these um, uh, field nodes or oceanic nodes into conversation, and these bodies of water uh, rarely talk to each other outside of uh, scientific conferences. Mm -hmm. And that also has a very interesting link to Bordel because he, in 1947, after the Second World War, took on the impossible task of defining what is the Mediterranean. And uh, it is everybody associates uh, different things, beach, sun, Dolce Vita, but also drama. So how are you trying to kind of redefine the Mediterranean with your project? Um, so the first, uh, the first strand, which is the Mediterranean strand, is led by uh, Barbara Casavecchia, the independent curator and writer. Uh, and she is working with five collaborators around uh, the shores of the Mediterranean, but especially focusing uh, on North Africa and the Asian um, parts that touch on the Mediterranean. And uh, this is literally or a, an exercise in connecting two situated practices of care on uh, concern of care and repair. So um, these, are, these are initiatives that have an applied practice, even though they might be coming from the arts or culture, the science policy or activism. Um, but but it is, um, it's really building a network of practitioners um, that, uh, that have a practice of care uh, and it's a it's a um, it's a format to listen, right? It's a format to listen to other ways of describing, of sensing, of uh, living in and with the Mediterranean. Um, there's a, a prevalent narrative that we all know of the most deadly border in the world, um, fortress Europe, and so on or the cradle of Western civilization, but there's not a lot of, uh, in between. And, um, and so we're, we're trying to um, foster these kind of other narratives, a multitude of voices, not a unified um, headline, the deadliest border in the world. Okay, and um, how does that uh, translate in, in, into practice? So. Uh, the curator, Barbara, she will invite or involve different uh, artists to, to, to um, come up uh, with new ideas or how, how, how can we imagine this, the results of this kind of um, collaborations? Yeah. So every third year of the cycle um, results in an exhibition of, uh, of these ideas, of the questions of the research at Ocean Space, the space that you see behind me. Um, and uh, so working with artists or cultural practitioners is kind of the, um, I would say, the connective tissue of this research um, experiment. Mm -hmm. It is meant to be transdisciplinary between art, culture, science, policy and activism. And everything has an educational component to it as well. So it's, a, it's reimagining what is what can a pedagogy of the Mediterranean be. Um, the the 
the power of an exhibition is still, and I completely believe in that, that it is um, a place where ideas can manifest, uh, where they become embodied and uh, uh, have a physical manifestation in space. And I think this is, this is uh, an incredibly powerful way of sharing ideas. Nevertheless, it is really trying to weave together these spheres, um, working continuously with, uh, with different practitioners, but placing art at the center. Art at the center in terms of a collaborative practice, a space for um, speculative poetics, uh, where we can imagine different realities, we can imagine what is possible instead of what is not all possible anymore. Um, and so, therefore, we will see then in uh, 23, we will see A, the exhibition of all of these uh, works that are coming out of um, the, the research project, the process, but also an ongoing pro program to elaborate the questions, uh, the concerns, the findings that have arisen from, uh, from this research. The research is structured about uh, around moments of togetherness. So there will be, uh, throughout the years, there will be uh, different meetings, um, different times of being together. The first one is, uh, is structured along a, uh, a seven day or eight day walk throughout the lagoon to spend time together to think, to, uh, to metabolize the ideas and concerns around the Mediterranean. Wow, that sounds like a beautiful program coming up. I'm really looking forward to that and hope I can participate in one of or more of those. <laughs> You're always invited. Uh, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm very, very impressed by what you are planning. And it's also so great to, to really bring art or, or the, the arts and also ecological issues together and try to kind of... Uh, um, make a sign or spread the message and and I think that art is really a powerful tool to transform yes. so I'm, I think it's really an honorable um, project that you you know decided to do and um, thank you so much for participating at our stream and um, really hope to see you very soon in person again and um, to speak more about what you are really um, coming up with in the next month.